and do it very safely. So the Lord was dealing with me, in the, and in the process, the answer was very simple, that as you ignite the hydrogen and oxygen in gases, if you will now prevent the hydrogen and oxygen atom to come together to form the water molecule, it cannot stabilize, right? If the water molecule cannot form during thermal gas ignition, then what will happen? Well, thermal explosive energy has to keep continuing to occur until one of two states occur, either that a new atom structure is formed or an implosion effect occurs and mass is converted into pure energy. The equivalent energy yield from one gallon of water is more than 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water when you're talking about tapping into the atomic yield of water safely. So as a result of this, we are now starting to destabilize the combustible gas atoms. We're starting to pluck off their electrons in the process to decrease mass. We're adding electrical or laser energy to the process to bring it to a high energy state. Now we've got combustible gas atoms coming off the water that is not in normal state. Right? They are now in subcritical state. Go ahead. To do this, we now had to develop the electron extraction circuit for plucking the electrons, and you're now using the water as a source of the electrons as well as the gas. Now, as you uh, attenuate the pulse voltage potential, the negative charge electrons in this particular case would come out of the resonant cavity, come down here, interact with the filament of the light bulb, producing heat energy in the form of light energy. <coughs> now, you know what I am I defining the laws of physics? No. Now, what a byproduct of the process is electrical energy, gentlemen. When you look at water, you now have it as a source of electrons. And when any time you move an electron down a source, uh, down a wire, have you not created electricity? Coulomb proved out that if you have a difference of potential of one volt, you can move one amp of current. Okay, go ahead. Now, in order to do this, we're now taking natural water. We're now mixing it with ionized ammonia gases and non-combustible gases to regulate the thermal uh, burn rate, and we're now subjected it to a very high pulse voltage frequency, tuning in to the dielectric properties of the gas, and now performing three functions simultaneously in order to release the energy from ordinary natural water on demand. Go ahead. Right here is an illustration of the hydrogen fracturing technology that as you hit with applied voltage uh, frequency, we're now plucking off their electrons. We are destabilizing the hydrogen and oxygen atoms by adding also the laser energy to the process. The ionized ammonia air gases now are in uh, capturing and preventing the electrons from going back into the process. And as a result, we're now sparking that in with the voltage. Go ahead. Now, this is an example of the hydrogen fracturing technology. To give you a little bit more of an illustration, here's where we plucked off the four electrons of the hydrogen atoms. We've highly energized it. So this is in a subcritical state, is it not? And as a result of this, we are now capturing the hydrogen electron. And as a result, uh, the laser energy being absorbed here now uh, is in a weakened state. Since the oxygen atom is in a, uh, in a high energized state, it will pluck off the electrons, much like that in muon, and release that tremendous amount of energy safely. Go ahead. Go on. Now we've also observed another phenomenon. We talk about ether energy, or God energy, or God's breath of energy. Uh, as you now subject the uh, liberated combustible gases to high pulse voltage and restrict the amps, you are now attenuating the electrical fields within the atoms. In the law of physics, we know that there are four basic forces that affect the atoms. There's electrical force, electromagnetic force, weak and strong nuclear force. Is that not so? Therefore, applied high voltage will now affect and put electrical stress on the atoms. And as a result, we are now attenuating the energy aperture of those combustible gas atoms, allowing universal energy to come in the system. And as a result of this, we are now priming those combustible gas atoms to release a tremendous amount of energy. And as a result of this, we're using the voltage in order to accomplish the task. Go ahead. Here again, we're now using where the oxygen atom that has multiple uh, protons in its nucleus. We're now putting electrical stress on the energy aperture to allow the universal energy to come in. And based on the pulse frequency, applied pulse frequency across these combustible gas atoms, we are now bringing these combustible gas atoms to a very high energy state prior to gas ignition. Go ahead.